Kevin Martich is going on about Bronsted, Arrhenius. It almost seems like it's the same. I'm super confused. I have no idea what an acid actually is. Why is this so complicated? These are the types of questions that I hear from students on a daily basis. And so I'm going to do my utmost best to help you to see the clear difference between uh, Arrhenius and a Bronsted acid and base. So let's start with acids. Arrhenius was the first person who was able to come up with a decent definition of an acid. What Arrhenius said was that an acid is something that releases H3O plus. Now your teacher might say, uh, let's not put brackets there, your teacher might say, um, your teacher might use H plus instead, in water. That's the important part, in water. So for example, if you take HCl and you react it with water, whoops, why am I putting a plus there? Wow. That's going to give you H3O plus plus Cl minus. So what we did was we put this in water and look at this, it produced H3O positive. Your teacher might do it like this instead. HCl gives you H, sorry, H plus plus Cl minus. The point is, as long as we are producing H plus, or if we are producing H3O plus, then according to the Arrhenius definition, we can say that, that, that HCl is an Arrhenius acid. Another example would be H 2SO4 plus H2O giving us H3O plus SO4 negative 2. So can we see that we put the H2SO4 in the solution or in the water and look at what we produced. We produced H3O positive. So because of that we can say that this must be an Arrhenius acid. Now the only way for us to be able to produce H3O plus would be if we use water. And that is why the Arrhenius theory is all about water. And that is also why the Arrhenius theory is not that good, because not all reactions take place in water. For this reason, we needed Bronsted. So Bronsted came along and said, no, 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 no. You can't only limit acids to water. You need to be able to expand it to include all types of solutions. So what Bronsted says was that a acid is something that donates protons. Now what is a proton? It's a H plus. That is all that a Bronsted acid is. So for example, if we take HCl and we react it with NH3, then we produce NH4Cl. So can you see that the HCl gave away one of its hydrogens to NH3? And so that NH3 was now able to have an extra hydrogen, and so it became NH4. So we can say that the HCl gave away a proton, therefore it must be, so that is not therefore, therefore it is a Bronsted acid. Because it gave, or it donated, or gave away a proton. Okay, now you might be wondering, can something be Arrhenius and Bronsted? Absolutely. Think about it. These are two scientists who came up with two different ideas, but surely their ideas do overlap a little bit. For example, remember when I was showing you the Arrhenius definition, we looked at an example like HCl plus H2O gives us H3O plus plus Cl minus. So according to Arrhenius, HCl is an acid. Why? Because it is placed in water and it produces H3O plus. So we can say that HCl is an Arrhenius acid as it 
produces H3O plus in water. Fantastic. But let's not forget about our good old friend Bronsted. Can you see that this HCO is giving its proton away to this water molecule and that water molecule is therefore able to become H3O plus. So we can also say that in the Bronsted definition, HCO is a Bronsted acid as it is donating protons. Can you see how easy that is? Something can be Arrhenius and it can be Bronsted. So let's quickly practice this. I want you to classify these as Arrhenius, Bronsted or both. So in the first one, we can see that this HCO is placed in water and it produces H3O+. So that definitely means that the HCO is Arrhenius. But can you also see that it is giving its hydrogen away to the water molecule and so that water molecule is now H3O+. So that means HCL is also a Bronsted acid. HCL is a Bronsted acid because it's giving away a proton. Let's look at the next one. So now I don't see any H3Os being, sorry, I don't see any H3Os being produced over here. And so for number two, this HCO cannot be Arrhenius because it's not producing H3O. But what it is doing is it's giving a hydrogen away to this molecule, or it's giving a proton away because that's what a hydrogen ion is. It's a proton and that is therefore becoming NH4. So we can say that the HCO is a Bronsted acid. Then lastly, number three, I can see that there is a H3O being produced because this H2SO4 is being reacted with the water. And so because we are producing a H3O+, we can definitely say that the H2SO4 is Arrhenius, Okay, um, but it's this H2SO4 is also giving its hydrogens away to the water molecule. And that's why the H2SO4, or let, let's rather say that's why the H2O is turning into H3O+. So we can say that the H2SO4 is also a Bronsted acid. So can you sort of see something here? An acid is always Bronsted. It's always a Bronsted because it's always giving away protons. But if it's not happening in water, then it can't be Arrhenius. So an acid is not always Arrhenius. And that is why Arrhenius came up with the definition first and then Bronsted said, no, buddy, you, you can't only limit it to water. Come on, man. We need to be able to include everything. And so Bronsted saves the day and comes up with a definition that we can use for all acids. Right, so now that we know what an acid is, let's talk about what is a base. So once again, good old Arrhenius enters the boxing ring very early on in, in, um, in his career and decides he's going to come up with a definition and he says that an Arrhenius uh, base is something that produces OH minus but then once again this guy is super obsessed with water in water something that produces OH minus in water so, but you don't have to worry about the water part. Um, you can just think of produces OH minus. So for example, if you take NaOH and you um, chuck it in water, so you dissolve it in water, NaOH doesn't react with water. That's why I'm not going, that's why I'm not saying plus water like I did earlier for the acids. So NaOH dissolved in water gives us Na plus plus O. OH minus. And so can you see that something is producing OH minus? So we can say that this NaOH is a Bronsted, not a Bronsted, Kevin. I was thinking of B for base and then I said Bronsted. It's an Arrhenius 
base. Another example, potassium hydroxide. If you put that, if you dissolve that in water, it's going to give you potassium plus OH minus. So because we are producing OH minus, we know that the KOH is an Arrhenius base. Then good old Bronsted comes along, and what Bronsted says is that a um, a Bronsted base is something. Now it's not going to be accepts OH minus. It's actually got nothing to do with OH minus. And so this is where the Bronsted and Arrhenius are a little bit different. It's when they talk about bases, they are quite different. So it is something that accepts a proton. Something that accepts a proton. So for example, if we look at HCl plus H2O giving us H3O plus plus Cl minus, I want you to zoom in to H2O. H2O receives a proton from HCl and then is able to become H3O plus. So because the H2O is accepting a proton, it is a Bronsted base. So we can say that the H2O is a Bronsted base. The H2O is a Bronsted base um, as it accepts protons. You might be wondering, is this HCl a, um, is it an acid? Yes, it's a Bronsted acid because it's giving a hydrogen away. And it's also an Arrhenius acid because it's producing H3O plus in water. So if you were wondering. Okay, so that's the Bronsted theory of a base is that it's something that accepts protons. Here's another one, um, HCl plus NH3 turns into NH4. Cl. So can you see, if you had to zoom into this NH3, I want you to see that it is accepting a hydrogen or a proton from the HCl and that is why it is able to turn into NH4. So the NH3 is a Bronsted base as it accepts protons, as it accepts protons. Can something be an Arrhenius and a Bronsted base? Yes, there's one example that I can think of. If you take, for example, NH3, which is um, typically acts as a base and you react it with water, then you could get NH4 and OH minus. So according to the Arrhenius definition of a base, we said that it is something that produces O H minus in water. Okay, so what we can see is that we've got we've got O H minus being produced. So therefore, N H three is a Arrhenius base. And then, according to Bronsted, we said it was something that accepts protons. So can you see that this water molecule is giving a proton to the NH3 and so the NH3 is, be a, is able to become NH4. So we can say therefore the NH3 is also going to be a Bronsted base. So here I want us to classify the, um, the base as a Bronsted, Arrhenius or both. So here we can see that this NaOH is releasing OH minus. So because it's releasing OH minus, that definitely means it's an Arrhenius base. But now, can you see that it's not accepting any protons? There's no protons in this question that are being moved around. And so we, we won't say that it's a Bronsted base. It's only an Arrhenius base, so that's quite interesting. Then I want you to look at number two, we can see that the NH3 is causing, uh, is producing OH minus in water, and so it's definitely an Arrhenius base. But I want you to notice that it's also this H2O molecule is giving hydrogens to the NH3, 
and that is why the NH3 turns into NH4. So it's also a proton acceptor, so we can also call it a Bronsted base. And then for the last one, we can see that this KOH is producing OH minus, and so that means it must be an Arrhenius base. So let's quickly summarize what we have learned. We know that an Arrhenius acid is something that produces H3O plus in water. And remember, your teacher might use H plus instead. Your teacher might say H plus. Some textbooks do that, um, so that's okay. And Arrhenius, um, a Bronsted acid was something that, let's write it like this, donates protons. Okay, then a base for Arrhenius is something that produces OH minus in water. And then a, a Bronsted base is something that accepts protons. And so that brings us to the end of this lesson. I really hope that you now have a much better idea of what an acid and a base actually is.